10% of Americans are getting this right. The majority of Americans are getting it wrong, and it's all about our, our frame of mind, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. Here is how you think about Social Security. Retirement for life. Your passport to a comfortable and confident retirement. The podcast that's equal parts education and entertainment, where we break down the retirement maze with a dash of fun and a heap of wisdom from your host, Christian Sear CPA, the passionate retirement specialist and president of Sear Financial Wealth Advisors, the independent registered investment advisor specializing in the AIM retirement system. Everybody, this is Chris Sear, your partner in retirement. We are doing a show today on Social Security. I dare to say the best video out there is going to be this one when we're done producing it on Social Security. Uh, I've spent hours reviewing almost 50 videos on YouTube about Social Security, and that experience reinforces one thing about what we are doing here on the show. What we said on the show we're going to educate. We're going to help people make good decisions. The industry is setting people up to fail. And those 50 videos, approximately 48 of them are giving erroneous or bad advice. So we're talking Social Security. Andrea, you sent me this Wall Street Journal article the other day, yep. how to retire better from retirees who learned the hard way. And this was the base for this entire discussion on how to take Social Security and how not to take Social Security. They document a 69-year-old man. He regrets retiring at 65. When you read the article, as you can see, he basically says one of the biggest things he did wrong was take Social Security early. Mm -hmm. And he is not the only person. I decided to apply for Social Security because of my living situation. Since I was already in my 60s and we were moving to a somewhat uh, rural area, there would not be a possibility for me to earn the same kind of income that I was living in a, in a city. I worked in the bar business. I wanted to be able to last like to my age now, certainly mid to late 60s before I had to start collecting to max out what I could collect, uh, but you know, didn't work that way for a couple different reasons. If I had it to do it over again and I had done more thoughtful research, I definitely would have waited to collect. I feel like I threw away a certain amount of money that I could have had counted on every month. There's a lot of different factors that go into it. It's not something that you should just sort of blindly say, I'm 62 or I'm 65 and boom, time to give them a call and let's start getting the check rolling in. In a perfect world, I would have waited to collect Social Security as long as possible. A story we've heard a million times. Looking out in the vast landscape of YouTube, there's more bad advice about Social Security than good advice. I want this to be the definitive guide on Social Security. Before you do, you have to take a step back. You cannot look at Social Security in a vacuum, can you? Nope. Baseline number one is our goal in Retirement for Life is maximizing the chances of retirement success. Yes. That is what you need to be thinking about. How do I maximize the chances of my retirement success? That is done very simply in two ways. You are maximizing the amount of money you have at age 95, and you are maximizing your income stability, AKA reducing risk as much as possible. Yeah. That is what you should be thinking about full stop in retirement, okay? But it does come into play when you're talking about Social Security. Now, the second thing this article says is that 37% of retirees underestimated their life expectancy by more than five years. Andrea, are you surprised by that? I feel like it should be a higher number. What do we tell people all the time about, you are 65, you are in our office, yeah. you're talking about retirement with us, what do we tell them their chances are to live long? Yeah, so a 65-year-old couple, there's a 50% chance that at least one of them lives to age 92 uh -huh. and a 25% chance that they live to age 96. One in four people that walk into our office, Austin, are going to live to be age 95. And they all say, oh, I'm going to die. No, mm -hmm. we're not planning on you dying early. We're planning on you living to be 95. That's what we're going to do as fiduciaries. Yep. Baseline number two. It's very important in the social security decision. 
life expectancy for a 65-year-old married couple is much higher than most people realize. You need to understand that the chances of you or your wife living to 95, there's a chance, a 25% chance, that one of you is going to be 95 years old. Have that in your mind when you're making the social security decision. Mm -hmm. And we'll get to how to make the decision, how to make this a good, educated, smart decision. But before we do, let's just talk a little common sense. So everybody's situation is different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you're just thinking very common sense, Austin, it says the math favors starting at what age? 70. Mm -hmm. The math says wait till age 70. Why? Because the average person who is 65, you just said there's a 25% chance they live to 95. Mm -hmm. But the average 65-year-old sitting in our office getting ready to retire is going to live to be about 84, 85 years old. But yet the break even on Social Security is 80. Mm -hmm. It's just very simple. The math is common sense. There are a few examples where maybe you'd want to uh, like, for example, if your spouse is much older or much younger than you. Or possibly if you're single. Single, um, and maybe one spouse has made a lot more money. But generally speaking, it's just a simple math pro, uh, problem, and that's what I want to show. So I asked Austin, since it's just common sense, right? We're oversimplifying right now. We haven't gotten to the real good stuff yet. Yeah, mm -hmm. We're oversimplifying. But generally speaking, for the average American, math is simple. Wait till age 70 to take your Social Security. But Austin, how many people in America take their Social Security at age 70? Did so you, I yeah. need to come up with that number. It is a percentage. I want all three of you guys to guess today. Brooke, you go first. Uh, 18%. I think 15%. I'm going to say 11%. It is 10%. You're 1% off. Look, 10% of Americans are getting this right. The majority of Americans are getting it wrong, and it's all about our, our frame of mind, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Here is how you think about Social Security. Hey, everybody. Are you enjoying this video? If you are, give us a thumbs up. If you want to stay on top of the content, then subscribe to our YouTube channel. Your support means the world to us. Thanks for watching. Um, baseline number three, there are so many variables in a plan. You cannot have social security in a vacuum you go to that dinner seminar they give you that can report about social security it doesn't take in anything else into account you have to have a complete plan sit down and make the decision with all the variables mm -hmm. right because when you decide to take social security at 62 it changes your investments when you decide to take social security at 70 it could impact your rmds and your taxes there's just so many things that all have to work together baseline number three don't look at a simple Social Security calculator online or at a dinner, dinner seminar and make your decision about Social Security. Mm -hmm. Baseline number four, a lot of times people come to me and they say their expenses are going to be lower in retirement, right? Yeah. What's the old lady say? Not gonna, I'm not going to spend a lot of money when I'm 85. Right. That's true. You're not going to mm -hmm. eat as much food. You're not going to use as much gas. You're not going to drive as much. You're not going to go as much vacations. Right. Your expenses are going to go down about 1% per year in retirement. Mm -hmm. One, one and a half percent. But Austin, what are we forgetting about? We still have inflation, which is beating what's going down. So you have a 3% inflation you have to account for. So what's really happened to our expenses in retirement? Going up. They're going up. Remember, your expenses will go up in retirement. And what's the big thing we didn't talk about regarding expenses? Healthcare. We've talked about it in previous episodes. Healthcare costs. 85-year-old couple, they're going to have about thirty dollars to $35,000 of out-of-pocket medical expenses. Mm -hmm. And I don't care how old you are, that's going to go up 5% a year. Baseline number four, your expenses are going to go up. So we've talked about the goal is to maximize the chances of retirement success. We've talked about that you have to look at the big picture with Social Security. And we've talked about the fact that your expenses are going to go up. So let's really talk about the last elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. What? Everyone, Everyone's always concerned about Social Security not being there when they want it. And what do I say about that? That it's not going to go away. It's not going to go away. The we people can, that we vote for are I not going to can make a whole episode it. on why Social Security mm -hmm. is not going to go broke, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to bore people with that right now. We, let's make another episode that nobody will watch about why mm -hmm. Social Security is not going to go broke. Social Security is not going to go broke. I will say one thing. Me and Elon Musk paid the same amount into Social Security last year. Okay? He's the richest man in the world. I'm not. One <laughs> flip of a switch, 100 people in Washington could fix the Social Security problem like that. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to say any more about that. 
Those are the baseline assumptions. So let's look at an actual example. 60 year old couple, they want to retire in two years. They want to retire early. What's mm -hmm. a great idea? Here's their social security. Uh, Austin, does this look about right? Yeah, I'd say all the numbers look pretty average. It's average. If you take it at 62, the guy's going to get 1960 bucks a month. If he waits till 70, he's going to get 3200 bucks a month. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is a typical retired couple. I didn't put tons of money in here. I put, I would say, an average 60 year old couple that comes to see us. Um, so remember the baseline. Baseline number one, our goal is to maximize the chances of retirement success. So the next screen I'm going to show you is a different possibility for maximizing chances of retirement success. I assume that mom lives to age 95, okay? Because you said there's about a 25% chance yeah. that that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So what we're really talking about is the man, okay? The man probably is the first one to die. So we got three scenarios here. He dies at 75, he dies at 85, he dies at 95. Yes. He can take his uh, Social Security early, which is on the left-hand side of the screen. He can wait till age 70, which is on the right side of the screen. What do you notice? Yeah, in every single case, regardless how old he lives to, it's better to wait to age 70. This is an average American couple that want to retire at 62. We don't know when they're going to die, but in every case, it is better the longer you wait. Mm -hmm. In every case. Yep. But what about real dollars? This is the amount of money this couple would collect from Social Security Administration. The average person is gonna collect a million dollars of Social Security in their lifetime. If they both live in 95, how big of a mistake have they just made? A million dollar mistake. Yeah. 1.1 something, 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 over a million dollars. You have to sit in front of a level five advisor and do the analysis for yourself. This is just a generic example, but in every case, they're better to wait because they could potentially make a million dollar mistake. And who doesn't want to collect a million dollars more from the government, right? I, th I just want to say to every person who ever walks up to me and says, I took my social security the day I retired at age 64, I just want to say, you probably made a million dollar mistake, but I don't mm -hmm. do that because that would be rude. <laughs> but that's, that's what I want to say. That's the first thing that goes through my mind. Um, so let's talk about the mindset here. People say to me all the time, they say, look, uh, I got gotcha you on this. I go, how do you have me on this? You should be waiting until 70 and say, I got gotcha you because what if we both die at age 70? And he's, I got gotcha. you. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, I got gotcha you. It's fine. If you both die at age 70, who cares? You didn't run out of money. You're dead. It doesn't yeah. matter. You know, this is like an insurance thing. Social security is an insurance thing. You want to protect against longevity, protect your, your chances of retirement success. So this guy is completely wrong. Uh, another Wall Street Journal article. There's a lot of stuff about taking Social Security at 62. Wall Street Journal here, a just recent article, three reasons why you would take Social Security at age 62. Hey guys, I wanna tell our listeners today about our most powerful tool, the AIM Secure Retirement Assessment. This is something that I built from the ground up. You answer nine questions, we throw it into our AIM retirement system. We put your current situation against the seven biggest retirement risks that people face in America. And it spits out customized report gives you the three most actionable things that you can do to help supercharge your retirement. Yeah. And it answers the question of when they can retire and how much they need to do that. Or if they're already retired, we can see how long their nest egg will last. That's right. right. And it also introduces the idea of mailbox money to people. Yeah. Like how much can we put in a protected mailbox money where we don't have to leave too much at risk against the stock market. Yeah, you can also learn how our CPAs can save you money on a Roth conversion. Yeah, and that's the DNA of what we are. We were a CPA firm first before we ever thought about helping people retire. Mm -hmm. The AIM Secure Retirement Assessment Tool, the most powerful tool we have, it's not a stale report, it is customized. Mm -hmm. Nine questions. I promise you, I guarantee that you will get great information from this. Uh, where do we get it from, Brooke? It just visit retirementforlife.com, answer nine simple questions to receive your complimentary assessment today. Nine questions guaranteed awesomeness. <laughs> Reason number one is a good one. To pay bills in case of declining health. I could see that, Andrea. Yeah. I mean, that potentially, and I'll show you, there's one and one time only that I believe you should take Social Security at age 62. This is part of that. Mm -hmm. But number two, Another reason to take Social Security early at 62 is because you don't have enough money. If you don't have enough money, 
what? Should not quit working. Yeah, it just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, if you don't have enough money, you should probably take your Social Security early. No, you should probably keep on working, Mm -hmm. okay? And number three, this is my favorite one. We just had a customer like this. Tell me what she said. Yeah, they were wanting to take their Social Security early because they wanted to have more fun money. I've got $3 million in the bank. We're having fun, but we want to have more fun. So should we take our Social Security at 62 Mm -hmm. so we can have just that much more fun? doesn't make no sense. No reason to take it. Nope. No. it does. So I would say to you that when I combine the Wall Street Journal article, I would take one of those three nuggets as kind of good, but I would go a step further. There's the and or argument. This is the and argument. The only reason or scenario I can see to take Social Security at 62 if all four things of these are true. So Austin, why don't you give them to me? Yeah, so the first one... Fairly certain that both spouses are going to die early. Stop right there. How often does somebody walk into our office, they're 65 years old, and they say, we're both going to die at 72? Rare. I don't okay. think I've ever heard anyone Number say that. Number two, uh, you will not or cannot work anymore. This is a valid thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like You could be disabled. There could be something wrong. Okay, fine. Keep going. Next and statement, you haven't saved enough money. Number four. You haven't explored the possibility of a reverse mortgage, which we discussed in our last episode. Episode six. This and statement, both of you are going to die early. You don't want to work or you can't work because you're disabled. Mm -hmm. You haven't saved a lot of money and you a reverse mortgage for some reason doesn't work for you. Maybe you don't own a home. This is the only example where you should take 62 Social Security. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you right now, I have no idea. This is just off the cuff. This represents about 0.1% of American retirees. So there are 0.1% of American retirees that should take their Social Security at 62, yet the majority of Americans takes their Social Security at 62. Yes. This is a mindset. This is a frame of mind. We're getting information uh, in our inner self that says we should take this money, we should take this money, but we're also getting bad advice from advisors. Take a look at this. So this is an advisor. And the title of the video is something like, don't make this mistake about taking Social Security age 70. That caught my eye, right? This is one of the 50 videos I watched in preparation for this show. Um, He is speaking about a 62-year-old couple that want to retire at 62. Mm -hmm. And he's explaining why they needed to take Social Security at 62. Um, I took a snippet of it. And there's one reason, one reason only why this works in this plan. And he's using the same financial software that we use, so you can relate to this. So Mm -hmm. check out how he is able to get them to take Social Security at age 62. Watch this. But here was the investment allocation that worked for their plan and that they were comfortable with. So this is really important component of this plan, and I'm gonna come back in a bit and show you why, but they were pretty aggressive. They had 90% of their portfolio in diversified stocks and 10% diversified across different types of bonds. And because of that, the return projection that we were showing was 8.8% per year. So, Andrea, I'm not going to say anything. You <laughs> say it all. I cannot imagine that there's too many 62 year olds that are comfortable with being 90% in the market. I just don't. Yes, it works if you're going to invest your entire retirement in the stock market, but that's just not prudent in my opinion. No. I would never, ever, ever put a retiree in a portfolio that is that much risk. Actually, most commonly, we're telling people they're too aggressive and need to take it down a notch or two. Baseline number one, what did I say? Maximize the chances of retirement success. That means getting as much money in your bank account at age 95. Well, yeah, one way to do that is invest in Bitcoin. But what happens if, you know, the stock market dropped 55% 55% in a 16-month period from late 2007 to early 2009. Right. Mm-hmm. And for the next 10 years, the stock market made no money. This is a straight-line projection this guy's putting out mm-hmm. there, 9% a year. I think anytime you get to an advisor, you ask the question, what is my overall assumption for returns in this plan? And if he says anything north of 6%, I think that's a red flag you run out the door. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, agree. I don't, I'm not accusing anybody of doing anything wrong here. This is just, I mean, factually, he's right. If you make 9% per year, like a CD, if you're in a 9% CD for the rest of your retirement, great. Go Do for it. it. Take yeah. your Social Security at 62, but unless, last I knew, there's no way that you can collect 9% a year guaranteed for the next 30 years of your retirement. Yeah, not without the risk of losing half of it. You need mm-hmm. to increase your income stability, mm-hmm. not your risk. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's a little backstory here. So th- my point is that not only are we framing this in the r- wrong way, because of human nature. There's advisors out there who are telling people to take their 
Social Security at 62, sure, go ahead and invest your money in the stock market. How's that going to work for you? Mm -hmm. It's like a coin flip. And the other thing that we don't talk about that most advisors don't like to talk about, the fact of the matter is what about fees? Yeah, I mean, if we're going to make a bunch of money and keep you in the stock market, we're going to make more money. It's a little dirty secret, Austin. The advisors who are telling you to take your Social Security at 62, what's going on potentially, most likely in the back of their head, is that I'm going to make more money. Because mm -hmm. if I, we, convince our clients to take Social Security at age 70, that means for the first five, six, seven years of retirement, they're taking money out of their nest egg. Yeah. And the reason we're doing that is because once 70 comes, we do the mailbox money, everything, they never probably have to take money out of their investments. Right. Mm -hmm. But as they're draining their investment account from age 65 to 70, fiduciary advisors are charging a fee based on the level of assets. Yep. And as those assets are going down, fees are going down. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it behooves an advisor to tell you to take your Social Security at 62. We had a lady who come in and the other day and she said, why, why are all my friends taking their Social Security early? Yeah. And we explain that to them. Mm -hmm. Yep. So here's the thing. Advisors may be giving bad advice about Social Security. Human nature is telling us to take money when we probably shouldn't. But we have this Social Security Administration. Brooke, I'm talking about the federal government here, okay? Now think about this. We had an example earlier where a couple, if they made the wrong Social Security de decision, loses $1.1 million. Yep. Mm -hmm. You're sitting there and you're working for the, so let's say Austin, you're in charge of the SSA, okay? Do you want me to take my social security at 62 or 70? 62, I wanna pay you less. Yeah, man, cause you're running out of money. Yeah. You're like, I hope these dumb people yes. take their social security at 62 cause that's an extra mo million bucks in my social security fund. Yep. And they frame it that way too. They're, mm -hmm. they're, they're also against us. And how, how do they frame it against us? Well, they're saying, do you want early or delayed. It's just like, do you want an early flight or a delayed flight? I mean, it's like, where would you go? 62 is early retirement yeah. and 70 is delayed. delayed. How sad. Mm -hmm. The whole world is working against us here. Social Security Administration, framing it the wrong way. A lot of advisors out there, like we saw, framing it the wrong way. Our human nature is telling us to take this money. It has to come back on you. You have to do the homework. You have to do the thorough due diligence. You can't look at Social Security in a vacuum. You have to look at it from a big picture. Go see a level five advisor. Sit down. You have to have the right mindset, the right frame of mind. Think of it like this. You listened to a level five advisor. Let's just say that advisor is us. We've mm -hmm. convinced you to take your Social Security at 70. You're going to wait. Unfortunately, 69 years old, you're flying off to Disneyland, you and your wife, and Unfortunately, the plane crashes. You both perish. Now the kids are in our office. What's our discussion with the kids? What are we talking about? I mean, just helping them figure out their st parents' estates. Mm -hmm. The will, the estate, yeah. the trust. What do we do with their accounts, yeah. What do we do to make everything as smooth as possible in this very unfortunate situation? Is anybody in the room saying, how in the world did you convince my parents not to take Social Security at 62? Because they no. died at 69. They didn't take a dime of Social Security. Nobody's saying that. No. They're dead. They're gone. Okay, that the frame of mind should be avoiding this situation. Yeah. You didn't listen to us. You took your Social Security at 62. Now you're 93. You've lost a million dollars that you potentially could have had from Social Security Administration. You're sitting in our office and you're telling us that you're running out of money. Mm -hmm. That is the frame of mind. That's the mindset. Social Security is a sunken cost. You've worked your butt off all these years. You've put money into this. You feel like it's yours. Yeah but don't think of it like this guy. How much money can you get from the Social Security Administration? Think about it as an insurance policy. Your mindset should be like this lady. What'd she say? She says, how can I maximize my chances of not running out of money in retirement? That is the mindset of Social Security. Don't think about how much you can get from Social Security. Realize that the statistics and the math are very, very, very in favor of you waiting until age 70. Know that no video is going to tell you what to do. The only way to make a social security decision is to go sit in front of a person that's giving you a complete complex plan like the AIM retirement system. Mm -hmm. Yep. Don't just judge what your neighbors are doing and do the same thing they are doing. It's very possible that they had bad advice as well on social security. Yeah. So that's the show on social security today. Use your head, 
do the math. The statistics show that you probably, very, very likely, should take Social Security at 70. Um, that's all I want to say. This video, we put a lot of hard work into this, Brooke. How can they like us or subscribe? What do they do? Yeah, go into our YouTube channel, like, subscribe, follow, all of that jazz. We have a goal. I have a goal. My sole purpose of doing this show is to get a million raving fans, which are subscribers on YouTube. I want a million subscribers on YouTube. Every show we give out, how many subscribers we have on YouTube. Brooke, what are we up? First of all, last show we were at 216. Yes. What are we up to? I checked this morning, we were at 220. That's great. That's like two followers a week. Yeah. We're two subscribers a week. Mm -hmm. Guys, if you like the show, please just go to rflshow.com and hit the subscribe button. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe, because that's what we're looking for, a million lovers of retirement for life. <laughs> Thanks. Have a great week. Investment advisory services provided by Sear Financial Inc., SEC Registered Investment Advisor. All content on this podcast is for information purposes only and should not be considered investment, legal, or tax advice. Material presented is believed to be from reliable sources, and no representations are made by our firm as to another party's informational accuracy or completeness.